welcome to you Red Group of School. My name is Dix Fenris. I'll be taking you to this new and healthy education. Revision. The topic we're dealing with today is swimming. We all have seen people swimming in different places. We've seen people swimming in the swimming pool. We've seen people doing swimming in lakes, um, rivers. We've watched people swimming even in sports, in television. When we turn to our, our sports uh, news, we we'll see them doing some aquatic sports. So today, the topic is not going to be something that is entirely new. It's going to be a revision class, something that you have already learned or known before now. So, I would like you to flow along with me as I talk more on this topic. Now, Swimming is an aquatic sport. What do I mean by aquatic sports? It is a sporting activity that takes place in the water. You can't do swimming in a dry land. Swimming is always done in, in an aquatic place. Aquatic, that is water. Okay? So, it's an, that is why we call it an aquatic sport. Any sport that is done on the water is called what? Aquatic eh? sports. So, swimming is an aquatic sport. That is a sporting activity that takes place in the water. Let's look at the history and development of swimming. You know, swimming did not just begin today. Swimming is as old as man. Yes, our forefathers, they did swimming because, of course, there was water, there were rivers. Before now, we never drank from Bobo. We always go to the stream to fetch water. And so, so as so we also swim in those days. Our papa does they swim. My parents they swim. They have rivers. Except for some state that do not have rivers or lakes in their community. So swimming is not a new thing. It's as old as man. It is regarded as one of the oldest human sports. Swimming is regarded as the oldest human sports. The early men engaged in swimming for two things. For survival, or they swam either in search of food or to get away with uh, wild animals. They swam for recreational purposes, you know, after doing some farm work or hunting, you just go to the river and you have fun, you swim along there. It was also done for that and also done for, that is for food, for hunting. You know, some people, they fish, they go along with a fishing line and and they fish in the river, they also swim there. They also swim to get away, that is to run or to fish wild animals. That is aquatic animals. Swimming was very popular in Greece, Egypt and Rome. These are foreign countries. Okay? They were very popular. It, is, it, was, not, it was not a new thing. I'm looking at the history and development of swimming. So, swimming was very popular in these three countries, Greece, Egypt, and Rome. Do you know why it was popular? Because they always engaged swimming in their recreational activities and religious ceremonies. Yes, they always engaged swimming as a kind of something they do to have fun in their religious purposes and in their recreational purposes. So let's continue. This nation included in it in their religious ceremonies and recreational programs. You know what I mean by recreational programs? Something you do to be lively, to you know, to play, just like sports, just like competition, to see who will win. And then just it's all about being lively and happy. Just like football, how some people like football a lot. Okay, so that is what how swimming is. Just like how football is a sport, swimming is also a sport in other countries. So swimming was introduced in Nigeria by our colonial masters. Yes, swimming was introduced in Nigeria by our colonial masters. Through the missionaries, today people swim for sporting and recreational purpose. People swim for two things this time around. They swim for recreational purpose, they swim to make money. Even people that 
those women in sport, of course they are paid. If they are if they if they happen to win in the sport, of course they'll be paid just like footballers. So you see, it is used for recreational purpose and also for 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 making people lively and happy for sporting activity and recreational purpose. It is now a natural activity of people living in the River Nine area. You see, people that I was watching uh, a, a foreign movie. You see how children swim. They, they were not even scared of the river. They were just playing there, swimming and coming out. You see, it's no longer something that they are always they will be scared of. It's not something they enjoy doing because of the river around their environment. So today, people now swim. Especially those that are, that are, they see it as a natural activity, something that does flow from the inside. Especially for those who live in the River Nile area. Let's look at the facility of swimming. Now, one of the facility for swimming is a large body of water. A large body of water. It can be a pond. It can be a lake. It can be a river. It can be a swimming pool. Okay because one of these is used for swimming. You cannot swim on the trail and I said it earlier. So swimming can always be done in any of these river, pond, lake, swim, stream, or a swimming pool. Or a what? A swimming pool. Now, if I want to swim as an individual, I want to swim, what should I do? What are the things? What are the swimming kits in order for me to swim? Or should I just put on my suit and dive in? No. There are things I need to wear on my body in order for me to be what? Fit for the sports, that is the swimming sports. You have here your swim trunk or swim suit. Yes, you have a swimming trunk or a swim suit. You also have a swim cap, just like a face cap, okay, that is used for swimming. You also have your Google, just like a speck, a big speck, that is, that is used to wear on the eyes to prevent water from entering into the eyes when swimming. Another one you wear is floaters. For people who do not really know how to swim very well, you put on your floaters, sort of like a, a tire, okay? Like some of us that went for swimming, now, in, that was uh, last uh, session, last time, he has went for swimming at random. So you see, they were very, very happy. The students were very happy. Some of them who could not swim, they used the floaters. Some came with their Google. So came with their, they all came with their swimming truck and they re, and they really appeared beautiful. You see, they had fun there. So this thing is not going to be a new thing entirely because it's something that we have already gone for the practicals. We often we have also learned it in our class. So we also have here rope for lines. This rope for lines, you saw it there. So rope for lines is used to. The market, for example, if it is going to be like a competition, just like a relay race where you have a lance, you don't need to run into the next person's eh, line. So during swimming, you have a line, you have a track. So this work for line is used to demarcate your line from the other opponents or parties. You also have a wrestle. A wrestle is also used for competition. Hmm? A wrestle is also used for competition. So you see, when uh, for example, the football, you, you also use whistle. It's also used for sports. Like this whistle now, if the, 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 the people engaged in the sports are about to set for the sport or the swimming, they blow the whistle to, to tell them that it's, it's time to, do or to start swimming. And when they reach the end, they also blow the whistle. That is for the final um, the journey of the sports or the game. We also have a plastic line matter. All these I've mentioned are the equipment used for swimming. Yes, they are the equipment used for swimming. Now let's look at the dimension of a standard swimming pool. This question is very, very essential because it might come out in your NECO examination or WIRIC. They will ask you what is the standard dimension of a swimming pool? Okay? What is the dimension of a standard swimming pool? And they will end up giving one correct answer and three wrong answers. If you are not careful enough in this question, you will fail it. So, now look, listen very well. An Olympic size swimming pool is rectangular in shape. They might even ask you, an Olympic swimming 
triangle is dash in shape. Triangle in shape, square in shape. They can give you wrong answers. If you're not careful or reasonable, you might end up going for the wrong answer. So, an Olympic size swimming pool is rectangular in shape. It is what? Rectangular in shape. And it has a length of 50 meters. Okay? It has a length of 50 meters. The length. The length of 50 meters. And then it has a width of 21 meter or 25 meters. 21 to 25 meters. 21 to 25 meters in the width. Then the depth is 1.8 to 2 meters. How deep it is. A standard swimming pool has a length of 50 meters and has the width of 221 to 25 meters, then has the depth of 1.8 to 2 meters. Now let's go to the five basic swimming skills. Five basic swimming skills. You might even be asked, how many swimming skills do we have? In swimming, how many swimming skills do we have? They can end up giving you eight. The questions, five, six, two, four, so this question, you have to pay attention very well to this uh, um, subject or topic in order for you to do what? Cross when you see such question around you or in your examination. So we have five basic swimming skills. The first one we have is the crawl or freestyle. The crawl or freestyle stroke. And we say that this style is the fastest stroke in swimming. The crawl or freestyle stroke. We did all these strokes during our, our excursion to Randolph Hotel. We did all these strokes. People that were there that participated in the excursion, they did all this swimming because the instructor showed them and they also did what participated in it. So we say that the crawl of freestyle stroke is the fastest of swimming in swimming. We also looked at the back stroke. Why do we call it the back stroke? You, 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 you swim from the back, from the back, facing the up, okay? From the back, the back stroke. So, we also have another type of stroke we call the breast stroke. The breast stroke, your, your, your body from the chest will be facing the river or the pool, and then you breathe, your face will be up, and you are, you're swimming, okay? You're swimming, your hands will be waving towards the back like this. So, we also have another one here. We have the butterfly or dolphin stroke. This butterfly or dolphin stroke is partially related to breast stroke. We also have here the side stroke. We have the side stroke. And we said that the side stroke is the slowest stroke in all the swimming stroke. Remember I said earlier that the crawl or freestyle is the fastest stroke. And now the slowest stroke is the is the is the side stroke. The side stroke is the slowest eh? stroke. And I said that it is used as life saving stroke. Maybe someone was drowned in the river or pool and could not swim. Person was shouting for help. What you do? You use the side stroke. You cannot just go there and start using the breast stroke. Okay, because you'll be facing down. So you use the word the side stroke. Okay, somehow partially sided like this, and then you use one other hand to do what? Helping the other person to swim out. So the side stroke is the slowest stroke and is used as a life saving eh? stroke. Now let's go to the precaution, safety precaution in swimming. Safety precaution in swimming. Number one, obey all safety instructions. You have an instructor, like when we went for swimming, we had an instructor. The instructor told us, do this, I do. Don't say, I know, I want to do it, I know, I have swim. No, 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 no. You have to obey. Obey the instructor. So obey all swimming rules. Number two, ensure adequate warm up before the swimming. Don't just finish eating food and you just jump into the river. You might get drowned. And actually, if you've not done, if, if you've not done swimming before. So you have to ensure that you warm up. Even, even in football, before you start playing football, you do 
warm up. You do some warm up exercise to keep your body agile and, and ready. Okay? So another one here, do not play rough. Like children, they need to be watched whenever they are engaged in swimming. Yes, because they like playing a lot and they may end up playing rough play during swimming. That may end up taking a life. Number four, we have the right swimming outfit. Like I said earlier, your swimming trunk, your Google, your um, face um, swimming cap, everything you need to use for swimming, you should appear on the right swimming eh, outfits. The fifth one here is never use ornament while swimming. You can see me, I'm putting on earrings. This is the called ornaments. I can only, if, if, if you, if, avoid wearing ornaments, jewelries, anything that, that is somehow heavy and could even make you sustain accidents during the swimming. Just remove them. When you are done with your swimming, you can wear them. Okay? Okay, we are progressing. Let's look at swimming hygiene. Swimming pool hygiene. What do you mean by swimming pool hygiene? Well, there are those things that will be done in the swimming pool to keep it what, clean and safe for people to use. The day we went for the swimming, the water, the swimming pool was disinfected. Of course, it was disinfected in the morning while we went there in the afternoon. So you see, this swimming pool, you know, is something, it's, it's, it's something that is used by everyone. So you need to keep the swimming pool very clean. Because through there, some people can also contact uh, diseases and infections. So this swimming pool should be kept clean. Now, if I want to go for swimming, the first thing I should do in order to be to make the swimming pool clean and also to keep myself clean or away from all disease is number one, take a bath before entering the pool. Like the children, I always refer this to the children because we have been there and we, we have gone for the swimming and it was all fun all the way. So that day, I was asked to inform them to go and take a shower for the girls. So they went to the restroom and the bedroom, they had a shower and then they came out for swimming. So the first thing you do is to take a bath before entering the pool. Secondly, clean the pool daily and disinfect it regularly. Like I said earlier, that before we read, we, we landed in the, in the hotel, the pool was already was disinfected. So we had to wait for some hours before going into the swimming pool. Now, number three, do not swim with injuries or skin infections. Do not swim with injuries. Maybe you have measles, you have open wounds, you have um, skin infections that are even irritating, irritating, and then you just, you know, jump into the pool and start swimming. No, 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 no. It's irritating and can even cause uh, disease and infection to other people. So you see, do not swim with injuries or skin disease eh, infections on the body. And number four, the last, do not swim during menstrual period. Yes, even when we were asked uh, uh, to take the bath, I was also instructed to tell my, my, my female students that they shouldn't swim if they were having their menstrual period, that moment, that, that, that day. So, but fortunately for all of us, they were not having their menses that day or that week. They all had fun and they had their swimming. So you see, as a young girl, if you are about to swim, make sure that you are not having your menstrual period because of course it will get soaked and then it is, I don't know what to say. So you see, for in order to avoid that, you need to keep the swimming pool hygienic. It is for the betterment of every body because even the boys and the girls, the old and the young, they all swim on it. Okay, having said all this about the swimming, I said that swimming is an aquatic sport, a sporting activity that takes place in the water. That's what I mean by aquatic sports. I also said that, I also gave a, a little history and development of history that, he, that swimming was brought by our, our colonial master during the missionary period. We also look at the facilities for swimming, which include a large body of water. We also look at the equipment for swimming. We 
Swim Truck, Trim Cap, Google, Floaters, Rope, Bristol, and Plastic Line Markers. We looked at the dimension for under swimming. Cool. We have here 5 meters for the length, 21 to 25 meters for the width, and then 1.8 meter to 2 meter for the depth. So having said all this and the safety precautions of uh, swimming and the types of uh, the basic swimming strokes, I will be giving you assignments because of our time. I will be giving you assignments. The number one assignment here is mention four other aquatic sport activities. Apart from swimming, hmm? apart from swimming, there are other aquatic sports. So mention four other aquatic sports you know. Mention three ways to develop confidence in swimming. I can remember we did that day that most of us, the students, we are shy. They were, they were scared of entering the, the pool. They were so scared of entering the pool. So in order to build this confidence in swimming, what will you do? Just give me three ways to build this confidence. Number three, what are the basic swimming skills? I've made it, said it earlier. What are the basic swimming skills? Just mention them and that will be all for the assignments and that will be all for today. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate. Please do take care of yourself and read your books. I remain your physical and health education teacher, Miss Famous Gifts. Thank you and God bless you.